My name is Brian Otto, and I'm going to talk about building Rebel Web Apps. Ren C, as most of you know, is a branch of the open source Rebel 3 code base. March this year, I was introduced to the online REPL they'd been working on, and I spent some time playing around with the JavaScript library it used. Uh, the library allowed you to embed a Rebel interpreter into an HTML page, and it gave JavaScript the ability to run Rebel code. Uh, the library also supported WebAssembly threads, um, but it was bleeding edge at the time, and we had a few issues uh, that prevented Rebel from being able to go the other way around and run JavaScript code. And eventually Brian uh, Dickens, he was able to figure things out and he got native JavaScript calls working within Rebel. So it was, it was pretty great. Rebel was now able to modify the DOM and it inspired me to see how much further we could take it. UI Builder is a rapid prototyping tool. Uh, it allows you to create a UI in real time by entering some simple commands into an online REPL. So let's do a demo here and we'll build a simple video player. So the first thing we want to do is add a row to place our video in. This will create a div um, that acts as our first row. But since rows aren't normally visible in our layout, the app adds a dotted border around it so you can see where you've added it to the canvas. The app also gives it an ID. Uh, this way you don't have to think about names while you're building the UI. So let's add a second row. So this time we got an error, and that's because you can't add a row inside of another row until you've added a column. We also want this row to be below this one, not inside of it. And since anytime you add an element to the page, it'll automatically get selected. What we want to do instead is select the top level canvas first. So before we can add any content to it, we will need to add a column. But we also want to think about where the controls should be displayed. So for our purposes, let's make the controls centered on the screen. And to do this, we'll need to add three columns and put the controls in the center column. Uh, but one thing to remember is that elements will automatically get selected when they're added to the page. And this time, we don't want that to happen. And you can prevent this from happening by providing the more refinement. So anytime you do this, you're telling the app you need to add more elements to the same parent. We also want to add the buttons in the middle column. So we select that by ID. Now let's add a button to stop the video. And let's change the text. Let's add an icon. And now let's add the play button. So those buttons are a little too close together, so let's move the play button over a bit. And let's center the buttons too. Now, finally, let's add the video. We'll do this in the first row. So right now, our controls are not hooked up yet. So let's uh, add some Rebel code and get those hooked up. So we'll need to select the buttons to do this. And set their on click event handler. And the function we're providing for this is a rebel function we'll be pasting in in a bit. So we click the code editor button and paste the code here. 
Uh, so I'll go over this a bit more in the next slide. But essentially, this is Rebel code that is executing JavaScript. And this JavaScript can control the video. So now we can try it out. The stop button will stop the movie. And the play button will play it. So these functions are pretty simple, um, but you, it could be a lot more complicated. You could uh, use them to process some business logic in Rebel and then update the UI with your results. Another alternative is we could add a feature to this app where it lists a bunch of third-party APIs you could download. So somebody could develop a Rebel API for handling all different types of videos, and you could include that in your app. So we have a working video player now. Let's hide the borders. And this is what the end result will look like. So additionally, the app has a few other things I didn't cover. Um, you can move elements around to different parts of the page. Uh, you can hide and show the element IDs in case you've forgotten what they're named. And we also have a few buttons on the right here. So one is you can change the styles of the element you're currently on. And you can provide functions for the event handling. And you can see that the play button is currently selected and listed there. So the final command I'll cover is export. What this does is it allows you to export your design into an HTML file. And that file will embed a Rebel interpreter with no outside dependencies. There are no JavaScript files that need to be included in the file. And I'll go a little bit over that on the next slide too. So you can basically distribute your Rebel powered app in a single HTML file. What you're seeing on the left here is some native Rebel code that's run by UI Builder. It uh, defines a JS native function, uh, which is something that is provided by the libr3 JavaScript library. And essentially, it's a function that can accept arguments and refinements, uh, just like a normal Rebel function would. But then it can use those within JavaScript. And so this particular function is uh, what we use to create the video element you saw in the previous demo. Now on the right, what you're seeing here is the HTML that gets exported when you create a standalone app. It takes libr3 and the service worker it requires and at base64 encodes them. And so it has these two very large strings that then get embedded into the HTML page. And um, it also takes the Rebel code, the custom code you enter into the code editor, and does the same thing. So basically, the app is taking these large JavaScript blobs, storing them in local browser storage, and then dynamically creating script tags that get appended during startup. Uh, this is what allows the Rebel interpreter to run uh, without any dependencies. We then push the custom code that's in local storage to the interpreter. This is what allows the video buttons to play the video. So there are some limitations with building these kind of web apps. Um, in general, performance is pretty good. Um, there are a few flags, though, for shared memory and WebAssembly threading that you can enable. And this will actually um, increase performance uh, quite a bit. And so that is an option to do that as well. And there is a push by the gaming community to have these enabled by default. So hopefully, you know, in the near future, um, you'll just get this for free. Now, another thing you need to think about is you're limited by the security context of the browser. So you're not going to be able to create any apps that do any kind of local file handling. You also, you're not, you're not going to be able to access sockets directly. Um, though you could, you know, having said that, you could write a dialect around WebSockets. And I think that would be an interesting project to pursue. It is also uh, possible to hit memory limits. The WebAssembly heap, it doesn't grow dynamically right now. 
And so larger apps have the possibility of running out of memory. There is a way to get around this though. You can, uh, the memory limit can be configured in RenC. There are some uh, interesting things on the horizon. So WebAssembly has a proposal out right now um, where you will eventually be able to access the DOM and web APIs directly. And th this would be great if we could do that because it means we could bypass JavaScript completely and the apps could be written entirely uh, in Rebel. Uh, another thing that's being proposed, uh, this time by the WICG, is a spec for native file access. Um, now, I'm not really sure how much the W3C actually listens to these guys and really how long of a process something like this takes. But, I mean, it may be wishful thinking, but it's pretty interesting that uh, this is on the table and it might be something that you can add to your apps in the future. Now, UI Builder was a pretty interesting experiment. But I think where the future lies is in progressive web apps. Uh, this is something that Google has been pushing recently, and there's been uh, quite a bit of support for it now. It allows you to do things a normal web application cannot. So one of the things is you can install and run them locally. Um, this is because um, they include a service worker that grabs all the pages in your web app and caches them locally. So this means you can run your app without being connected to the web, which is basically like a native application. Um, they can also run without your browser's address bar and tabs. And so kind of the look and feel is like a native application as well. And this works on most platforms out there now. And something that I wanted to try, because I saw that it used a service worker, and I wondered if we could switch out the regular service worker with the inscription service worker that the libr3 uses. And I was actually successful in doing this. And it did this without having to enable those special flags. And so you get the performance benefits of Inscription without having to enable the flags by just making building your app in a progressive web app format. So this is where I've kind of been pursuing uh, things now. I've started to build an HTML template to meet the requirements for this, and then experimenting with um, libr3 as a serverless worker for it. And so far, it's, it's been going pretty good. So that concludes my talk. Hopefully, I've maybe inspired you to try RenC um, or try out some of the projects mentioned here. Um, usually, we hang out in the Stack Overflow chat, so feel free to join us there or participate in the forum.